Welcome back, everybody, watching Morning Live here on SABC 2 and Channel 404, focusing in on communications and all issues around that. And our Minister of Communications is our guest, amongst others. And uh, as Peter said before the break, we're going to be taking a look at some of your comments and questions as well. So let's do that right now as we, uh, uh, you know, read them. And we'll go back to you, Peter, straight after we've done this. Um, here is one from Prince uh, Jules saying, Minister, is your team in Rustenburg? Because we don't see anyone. I'm not too sure. So perhaps Rustenburg under, um, under the question mark there. Here's another one, Notorious Mabilani saying, the 90% local music the SABC started is a dictatorship. They're forcing us to listen to some kind of music. So there's a criticism for the 90% local music. I must say, I haven't seen too many of those criticisms, but here is one uh, uh, aimed at us, not, not happy with the, the local music. Um, here's another one um, from a girl to a woman. That's the name of the Twitter handle. How do we support and protect our local artists from piracy and exploitation? That is a question that's been asked for a very, very long time. Uh, perhaps uh, we can shed some more light on the efforts that are being done. Here's another one. Um, um, Intercell Cash, that's the name of the uh, Twitter handle. How, where or when can we submit ICT proposals to the Minister of Communications? Um, it's not possible with Telcom and uh, the South African Post Office. So there you go. There's another one. Chapiso saying, please make government sites available for free on all tele networks. There's another one. And uh, another question. Will independent productions be given chances in the SABC, not only those from Johannesburg? Well, if I can answer that question, I remember that there was a, there was a news um, meeting and a production meeting with the SABC that was to all of the provinces here in South Africa looking for new production houses and companies to submit all of their ideas and proposals. So to answer that question, I think it is for the whole country and not just for Johannesburg. But all the bosses are there. They can answer that one for you as well. All right, let us go back there and uh, we'll continue to monitor some of the questions and comments that come through. Peter. All right, Leanne, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we didn't catch all of those questions, but I think we, we got the bulk of them. And um, I'm going to start with you, Dr. Timba. This 90%, the artists are happy. They're singing, they're dancing. They've even written songs for Mr. 90% himself. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's, there's some people who are saying, is this a dictatorship that you're forcing us to listen to this music? Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, this is the strategy that um, Mr. Mtwining told us as the board from 2013. But because they were, were still doing some policy changes to fit, it happens this year. Uh, it's not a dictatorship. Um, it's the patriotism that the CEO of Brandese was talking about. Um, we're supposed to be proud of our country. Wherever you go, just across the border when you go to Botswana, you'll hear Botswana music across all channels of, uh, in Bhutan. Uh, you go to China, you, you are lost. Uh, you won't even hear a Zulu song there or Chief Venda song. Or... So we, as part of what the minister has said, um, we are, have that mandate as the um, government company to promote our country and uh, to promote patriotism. and. Uh, some people mentioned that the timing of time and of bringing 90%. Um, we approved 90% as the board end of last year strategy. And uh, because the scheduling starts beginning of the financial year, that's when it, it is announced now. And after the minister's budget speech, that's when it's, it is announced. And, the hip that we see and the trends in South Africa that Mr. 90% Mr. Mtwining, it shows and it means that South Africans have been waiting for it. In fact, some were saying it's like a new liberation to them, okay. you know. Yeah. All right, so here's a hypothetical question. If you get feedback in the coming months from the public that 90% is too much, and that you need to pull back because we'd like to hear other music as well. Is that something that might happen? 
it won't happen. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that is, uh, um, as the board, uh, I'm also uttering the words of Mr. Mswening. It won't happen because uh, MDDA is here and uh, ICASA is here. We have built the industry in the country now up to an extent that there is a lot of private radio stations. If people don't want to listen to SBC stations, tune to another one that is playing a different music. But as the minister has said, we following the mandate of government, 90% is why are why. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there were other tweets that came through, other questions that came through. Do you want to address some of those? Yes, I have the one of the post office yeah. and the telecommunication aspect of that. I think uh, Ruben will deal with that because uh, they are responsible for the regulation, but solely to say, uh, hence we brought this team, is just to explain the mandate of this department. It's separate from the Department of Postal and Telecommunications. I think there's still some confusion in a way with what is the mandate, but ours is we are responsible for the overarching communication policy. Hence, we have, we, are, we have got also a department within our ministry called Government Communication and Information System that has to deal with the, the various platforms that we have as government to communicate. We are also, GCI is also responsible for the championing of the Izimbizu program as Moxin during his opening address has dealt with that. But to say then, also the issue of the marketing and advertising, it has to deal with the GCIS. You'll recall in my, in my budget speech, the same day when we were making this pronouncement, DTI was also gazetting the marketing, advertising, and communication sector code. Uh, you remember that thing was negotiated over a period of 15 years. And then it means now then we are able to implement this uh, the sector code, and then also we we had to deal with the transformation sector when it has to deal with the marketing, advertising, and communication sector. I'm glad that I'm seeing Mr. Matlangu here from the state-owned entity communicators forum. You remember we have over 700 state-owned uh, state -owned, uh, entities. So we have, as the department, in particular GCIS, we have entered into a memorandum of understanding with that entity so that we make sure that we evaluate the marketing, advertising, and the communication companies that are providing services to government and all the entire entities. But then you check, uh, Harold is here, they will share with you, I think you'll have an opportunity to say in terms of our platforms. You know, we have got this government website, uh, SA News, it has got to massive, massive and lots of information that will also empower our people to make their decisions. But I think Ruben will deal with that issue of the regulation with regard to the post, postal matters and the telecommunications matters. All right. Well, let's uh, introduce him, actually, the acting ICASA chairperson, Ruben uh, Motaloga. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, being part of this panel now. And maybe you can address uh, those concerns that were raised. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Peter, and good morning to the viewers and colleagues. Uh, as you know, we, as ICASA, are a creature of statute, mandated to regulate ICT in the public interest. And that straddles uh, for broadcasting, telecoms, and postal. Uh, and I'll come back to, to the questions that have been raised. But for the purpose of this intervention, I think, um, uh, will situate the discourse in the context of broadcasting and say that we, we've got local content regulations that we have reviewed in the past three years and published, and we set minimum quotas and we congratulate the SABC for exceeding the prescribed minimum quotas. And going forward, we'll continue to monitor compliance uh, with regards to the quotas that we have set. The second intervention going forward is around the um, opening up the airwaves. Uh, you know, we had a licensing process for free-to-air commercial, and uh, that process is going to restart, issue the new ITA, and see um, how
how we can uh, bring competition and more diversity of views in that space. And thirdly, <coughs> we have uh, published uh, regulations that govern local government elections, as you know. Uh, 3rd of August, it's elections time, and uh, we have issued regulations that ensures that that will empower the public to uh, have a multiplicity of views and be able to choose the election uh, political parties that we want to vote for. So we'll continue to monitor the process around the elections and stuff like that uh, going forward. And we're looking as well at the community broadcasting space and uh, establish a regulatory framework for that. Um, and as well as the um, the issue that the minister was talking about with regards to interferences, we, we will continue to work with our colleagues in SADC to make sure that as we proceed going forward dealing with the teacher migration, we deal with issues of interferences and so on. And, and, and lastly, the <coughs> um, we'll release a discussion document with regards to the subscription TV market. I think it's a space that we need to look at because there's no competition in there. We have licensed several players, and uh, there isn't sufficient uh, levels of competition. So we want to look at that space, that space as well. Now, <clears throat> coming to the, the issues that you, you raised around telecoms and postal, we <coughs> regulate the postal sector, not necessarily the post office. Post office is one of the, <laughs> the licensees. <laughs> and we set out the, um, the regulatory framework that imposes certain obligations that um, uh, have got to do with universal service and access, uh, the rollout of addresses and uh, post boxes, <coughs> and uh, the telecom side as well. We um, there's a quantum of regulatory interventions that we've introduced, um, um, and as you know today, uh, if you are on the prepaid, you, you pay a bit affordable. Okay. Um, uh, calls. All right. Again, I'm sure there's uh, a few more questions that we're going to need to explore there. But there is one um, young woman I'd like us to meet right now. Um, she's the president of the LRC in Koloshani High School. Uh, and you've been watching and seeing stories coming out of uh, Limpopo, particularly in and around the Vuani area. And uh, Miss. Uh, Ramon Sindela is uh, the president of the LRC, Koloshani High School. And I'd just like you to stand up. Let's get a microphone to you. And I'd like to get first hand from you um, your thoughts about the schools being burnt. How is it affecting you as students uh, in the area? Um, the schools being burned has affected us in a very bad way because since, this, since they're banning the schools, other learners won't be able to go to the schools because they're, they're banning the schools. So this situation has affected us very badly, and we hope that people will stop banning the schools because it's not good for us as children because we, we still have to learn. So that's what I have to Are say. Are you feeling safe? No, we're not safe. All right, so what are these adults telling you about why they're doing this burning? I think it's because they want to be heard. They just want the decision. They just want the answer. So mm. they think that being the schools will make the government change the decision. Okay, but your cry is please don't take away our education. Yes. All right, thank you so much indeed. Uh, Minister, I know that you've spent a lot of time up there and um, I guess these platforms help to spread this word. Is this situation being resolved? I saw that the um, Cocteau Minister was trying to put a ta task team together to try and uh, resolve those issues. Yes, and we need to also thank the SABC up front and the print media to this effect. There are those that uh, they've taken it their responsibility to spread the, the message because it's not government problem alone. Because that's why now, because you understand uh, the nature of our print media in particular, instead of us uh, 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 promoting social cohesion, you find instances where instances of violence then are the ones that are being perpetuated and reported mostly, unlike the good work that uh, we are trying to do as government. So Kingsley earlier said uh, South Africans have got the role to they have to play their part as well, especially when it comes to this issue to say we must condemn violence, 
The burning of schools is unacceptable. I always call it selfish because then the kids now they've got the motto that you burn my school, you burn my future. That's the messages that we have come across. But I'm very much impressed by the other communities there. They've just then stood up and say, not in our name. It can't be that when people have got issues, then they ban schools, destroy the future of our children. I, I could say up front, we are making inroads there in the sense that we have managed to have engagement with communities. There are stakeholders that are coming to the party, churches, civil society, such that we have managed to stabilize this. You see, those ones are wearing uniforms. We just had to request them to come here solely to do, deal with the take the girl child school. They are attending school. But that those areas like like tomorrow, we're still going to have engagement with another communities. Bit by bit, now they are coming to the party to make sure that you can't disrupt uh, schooling. And then also, I was say up front that cabinet yesterday also reiterated that to say, what is very funny of late, kids are going to school. When they arrive there, there are no teachers. And these are the teachers that are claiming to be intimidated. The sense that we cannot, we don't get that effect. To say, I think now as we're speaking, the Department of Education is having that engagement with the teachers' union to make sure that teachers go back to school and teach the children. You'll recall also that there won't be a special exam for those kids that are affected in Vuani. Exams are starting next week, and then it's already for those. Some of them is 19 days now lost where kids were not attending. But as we're moving around also, I was inspired by a group of young learners. When you find them, when you move, they are not attending school, but they themselves together, they are clubbing in the schools, catching up, teaching themselves, because you can see their commitment. So the call to the nation is that even if people have got grievances, they can't really disrupt the future of young people, in particular the grade 11s. They need this June exam for them to be admitted yeah. in university. Same thing with the grade twelves. Without the June exam, they can't go anywhere. And in essence, I think there's a message that we're trying to spread and then right. the, the communities are coming to the let's party not, to that let's effect. not punish the innocence. Mm. Okay, table number eleven, Joe Jordan. Good morning. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Honourable Minister, um, we as SAMRA represent 15,000 uh, composers, uh, so that's everyone. And on the question of that Leanne mentioned earlier, where, where the question was how can government help to stop the exploitation of, of musicians, uh, departments like the Defence Ministry, um, uh, Correctional Services, SAPS, they use music from South African musicians, but when <laughs> our salespeople go there to try and license them, uh, they're turned away. Can you help us? Okay. Uh, uh, Dumisani, I can't quite see your surname here, but you're on table number 10. Um, if you could uh, just stand up and say your name. Okay. Uh, my name is Drun Sansa uh, I'm, 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 I'm from Lupop. I'm the publisher of Songa a newspaper. Uh, I've seen uh, all of them. Cool. Uh, uh, my question is: uh, 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 in, in 2011, uh, somewhere in 2011, I, I, I think we are still in the portfolio committee on communication. You were taking the decision that 30 percent of government spend is going to community media and small commercial uh, media. So I just want to know when are we going to to, to get that? I mean, 30 percent, or or if it's possible now. Uh, 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 can you change it to 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 ninety uh, ninety percent? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So <laughs> let's take this. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's take those two questions. Um, okay. And I think he's referring to advert ad spend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, can I start with this one of media transformation? It addresses yes. your issues as well. We, we have said in our budget uh, speech that uh, last year we said digital migration is our flagship project. Now, for this year, and I think we've made inroads to that effect. And then now we are saying uh, media transformation is our flagship project for, for this, this financial year. Then that comes to the issue that is raising. Let me start to deal with that one first. On ad spent. Yes, 
uh, uh, these are the issues that we've been discussing with GCIS because as I was doing road shows over the past year, when I meet with community media, they always told me about this agency thing in between. <laughs> that at the end of the day, that 30%, they don't get it as it is. It goes into these consultants that are called, uh, you remember as government, we said we were doing away with labor brokering. But still then, at the end of the day, these community radios, this community media, they just get some uh, peanuts, the money, the big money, out of, out of that 30 percentage. So I've commissioned GCIS to give me a report to that effect for us together with the MDDA to say that it can be, and then we'll be holding colloquiums as we deal with the media transformation aspect in, in the next month, end of June. We will intend to hold a media transformation colloquium. These are some of the issues that we're going to deal with together with Suka. This is the issue that in terms also with the shutter that I've said that it has been accusated, we'll have to deal with those issues. But it's a concern because as government, it's us that established this community media. And now given the current status quo, because if you check with regard to this big four mainstream media, they've taken a particular posture towards government to say then whatever government, what they're interested on, it is to report on the scandals. The good thing that the government that is doing, they are not interested in reporting that. But also it comes to the issue your ownership have said in my budget speech to say, also there's a particular posture to say, this black-led government, if it's not scandalous, there's nothing good that they are doing. I'll also show you, Elia Muxin raised the issue of them now. There are people that of the view that TNA and N7 must be dealt away with. And I can say this is the biggest crime this government led by President Zuma has done to deal with this monopolies in the sense that you remember AN7 and New Age, they are the only newspaper amongst the group that are able to report the positive thing that government is doing. So then for the private media ownership, that becomes a problem because now they are not able to reign in terms of the consumption of the news and then our people then they get empowered so these are some of the things that we say we're gonna deal with decisively uh, Lumko is here from the other party but i think that has been his uh, area of interest to that effect to say we want to go to the offensive it's time that we transform the sector Right. It's time so that our people then have options, the right to choose, unlike what they are being fed with all the time. So these are some of the things to say. That one of us supporting community media is a non-negotiable. I think we've been talking a lot. It's okay. time for action now. But uh, the 90% one also, I think that's the route. Isn't that we are the policy makers? We had to make sure that SAB does 90%. That should also come across when it comes to community media because these are the media, you remember, some of them, Ikasa will say that one of the requirements of the license condition is that it must be local content, languages. So, and then you see South Africa is a diverse society. We are talking about nation buildings where you have got 11 official languages. And then when it comes, there's discrimination to that effect to say you, you only that it's English and some few languages. So we want that diversity to be practiced now. In essence, that's where now the community media become very much critical because their license conditions are in line with also the languages and their locality where they are found. So that's the one flagship project which together and will urge South Africans. As and when we start this public consultation, we want their input so that at the end of the day we're able to try so, so what kinds of transformation do you want? And are you not over um, estimating the influence that uh, these newspapers have, given that the SABC really has a lion's share in terms of media attention across its television and radio platforms, given that you've got all of these community radio stations uh, that are serving their communities, and that given that these newspapers are actually selling less and less newspapers as time passes, and also given that most of the conversations are taking place on social media now, are you not flogging a dead horse in terms of saying that you know, these, this media is uh, just spreading scandal and so on and so forth? That's not where the conversation is really taking place. You see, this government is pro the poor, Peter. Yes, access in terms of online for others. But I think we need to face reality. 
There are people that are there in the rural areas, deep, deep rural. For them to even have a cell phone, it's a luxury. You know what I'm trying to say? And then they solely now rely on radio. That's why all the time people underestimated the power of voice when it comes to radio. And then for that effect, I want to commend the SABC because through their 19 radio stations, at least people are able to be empowered, informed, and then they're being educated, entertained, and also they understand the type of decision they need to take based on that. But there are those that we need to also, because also from the rural schools where these kids are coming from, I think that information we have made in rules in terms of the vocals and Zele distribution from GCIS. But you know there are also challenges to that effect in the sense that we release it twice per month and also in terms of access and reach that that's the other issue that we're working on to say there's a lot of demand for it because now you start to talk to the information on what government is doing but also access the number that we're printing vis-a-vis -vis the number of the people that want to consume that newspaper the accessibility hence also with regard to the printing media we want to encourage yeah. because there are those that still believe in the traditional method to say they need to keep their newspapers. It also, when you come to the villages, even access to Sowetans, to this big main, mainstream, they, to, for kids to access a city press to get those positions there, they need to travel to towns to get that. Some don't even have the money okay. to go there. Hence, we say the importance of community media is very crucial and very important because normally I, I want to appreciate the work that the MDD is doing in supporting those initiatives. In the past, print media had to contribute and then they just decided to withdraw to say they are looking forward to see on our transformation agenda. But you can see, look at the bigger picture. The reason for the withdrawal was not that to say they could see now that community print media was starting to compete. So how do you find a competitor? So we are going to go to the offensive now and deal with that transformation and see if they will come to the board. Because also, when it comes to ownership, you see, you'll find these black journalists that are there. But for them to progress to own, who owns printing companies today? Because that's the same thing now that is also dealing with our own community print media in the sense that even if they want to print, they go there, they go to this yeah. uh, big four. Okay. For them to print for them, they need to wait. Sometimes their newspapers are printed very late. They become absolute. These are some of the issues that we need to seriously deal with, that also to deal with the issues of ownership. Oh. But nevertheless, as I've said, we're going <laughs> to hold <laughs> consultations on this matter. We call all South Africans to contribute to this okay. event that we need this time to transform this media industry. All right. And uh, we'll pause right there. And we might get some comments from you, uh, Menkoma, afterwards. But uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be back after this.